This is a moment that I will never forget. This kid is a little different. You got to bring it. The K wanted to bring it. He's finna give y'all buckets. Like, this man is league bound. Y'all don't even understand. He just, he knew he was better than everybody. There's so many thoughts running around that you can't hold on to one for so long. You're thinking about so much, but at the same time, you're thinking about nothing. It wasn't easy, but here we are. He needed to fly. They're gonna give him that work for sure. This is tough, man. Yeah, this is my welcome. first time really coming into one for real. Ah, welcome, man. So this is the professional stuff. Oh, I ain't never made a beat. Hold on, put me on. Here, bro, you I got... Could, you can help me make a beat? Straight up. What's up? If I make a beat that's hard, we can get on there? Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> lock in, right? All right, man. You right, Come on, man. Like, I lock in, yeah, bro. All right, I'm all right there. If we get it, we just going to drop maybe a snippet. You feel me? Yeah, we ain't going to drop give them all We're not giving them too much. We're not going to give them too much. So you can just put a hit right on the right on the three every single time, especially for, like, hip-hop stuff. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Really rock out now, I got a feel for it. Mm. Oh, mm. Bad, bad, okay. Bad. Okay, bad. Mm. Yeah, you can hang mm. in the mix, you can feel. How lit I want the song to be, bro. Lit. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh god, hello. Cause I yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you wanna learn how I got to Detroit? I'm trying to hit it from the beginning. First, we gotta take it back to Arlington. Oh. Well. Yeah. Tag town, Texas in this joint. <laughs> this area right here is dogs. It's a lot of kids that's out here that don't get the same hype. Dallas is, you know, the big city. Everybody's thinking about Dallas, so that's what makes us the sleeper. Yeah. Hey, what are we trying to talk about, fool? Man, I don't even know how we lit, boys. Bring me to the lifestyle. <laughs> Kate says he won't claim Dallas anymore because he wants to put Arlington on the map. We tell people we're from Arlington now. They make them ask us, where is Arlington? <laughs> I got a couple of things I want to say. The guy that's from Arlington, they're going to give him that work for sure. You know, when the Cowboys play and they zoom in on the city, you know, we kind of feel a sense of pride when they say, live from Arlington. but in so many ways, he has such a special relationship with all of us. Big head, he had a huge head, <laughs> didn't match his body yet. <laughs> it was tough on me. Being the youngest, my brother and sister had their own way of pushing me and, you know, toughening me up. You know, we still find a way to, to always come together and make sure each other's straight. And that's what you want in your siblings. What you said, Bucks and Six? Seven. 
help him out. I want to see CP win and retire. You know, he was an all-star every year until his last year in LA, I think. Yeah, Don't keep that in there if I'm lying. <laughs> we got a fact check now. <laughs> fact check. <laughs> Cannon has the traits of an oldest child. He is kind of straight and narrow. If there's a perfect role model, Cannon is it. And, you know, Cannon didn't bring no drama around. It's amazing how much it helped. It took a lot off my and Carrie's plate. He was six years older than me, nine years older than Kate, so part parent, part brother. Cannon's just always been, like, on track. Even in Young and Hoops, I've never just, that I can remember somebody saying, Little boy, like, and I felt that. <clears throat> yeah, you was a big dog when you was little. You kind of worry about whether they're going to have a close relationship with that big of an age gap. Everything Cannon did from playing baseball to football to basketball, Kay was there for everything. I remember times in the front yard, I'd kick it off to him and he'd have to score on me. You know, I'd trip him and, and he'd fall down and want to start crying and, you know, Big brother, you know, you just try to boss him up a little bit in the best ways that you can. I couldn't ask for a better older brother, honestly. You know, he, he pushed me. He didn't make things easy on me, but at the same time, he encouraged me and, you know, gave me confidence. You know, as I learned things, I tried to just pour them into him as, as soon as I could. Honestly, he was just kind of my guinea pig, like. <laughs> Cannon was a beast. Um, I, I say it all the time. Cannon could have went to the NBA. When he was in high school, he was like that guy. I remember a ton of college letters coming into the house. Cannon was like the early version of Cade. Big time shot blocker. You know, I could score around the basket, I had to go shoot and touch. Maybe it's just because I was his little brother, and you know, my eyes are, I'm watching what he's doing, but he was like always the main attraction in the games that I saw. Ashton would train Cannon. Cade was right there, along for the ride. Moody was like heaven, the biggest and best place to me at the time. What do you think of this place, man? When I came here, I. I didn't even dream of this. This is ridiculously nice. I always thought, like, you got to be really big time to play in these arenas. It made me want to work even harder. And, you know, seeing Cannon get pushed like that by Ashton, I was way more willing to, you know, push myself. Kay will come to the gym and just be on the sideline. He'll see us doing ball handling. He'll just get his own ball and just pound the ball. Just do what we were doing on the sideline. It was a fantastic ride for the entire family, but I think Cade soaked a lot of that up. It's not about going number one. That's out of my control. We focus on putting in the work every day because success is no accident. I got a taste for coaching really young. My dad was a head coach for one of Cade's first YMCA teams and he let me be his assistant. That was when I first understood that I like helping other people get better. We put in a lot of time and I really, really did think that I, I, I had him. As far as going to the NBA and things like that. I knew that Cannon had the talent, but I knew that his passion was more for the coaching and the teaching. I thought that it was amazing that he was going to pursue that passion. He felt like, you know, coaching was his passion, and so he wanted to chase his passion. And Ashton just being so basketball loving, he wanted it so bad for Cannon. He said, Ashton, let me retire in peace. I just went in that zone and just shredded a tear, man. It was, it, was, it was a sad day for me. Ashton wanted me to be a pro more than I wanted to be a pro for myself. My heart wasn't in it anymore, and I was truly more interested in seeing my brother do well than myself in a, in a basketball sense. For Ashton, it was definitely like a, a blow to him.
I guess it all worked out because now Cannon has his passion. He gets to help me, and, and Ashton was even more motivated than ever. I think he kind of took that <laughs> and put, you know, all that frustration with that situation on me. Like, nah, you're going to work. I'm training his older brother. At the same time, looking to the sideline like, whoa, hey, he picking that up a little quick. That kind of brought that to my attention that this kid is a little different. As a trainer, Ashton's really high energy. A lot of pros that, that work with high-level trainers and then get to work with Ashton typically prefer working with Ashton. He does a good job understanding what guys' strengths and weaknesses are coming into the workout. So me growing up, I was good in basketball, just off the talent. I, I never worked out. I went to school with a kid named Avery Bradley. I was better than him at that time in seventh to eighth grade. As we went to high school, he just took off because he was working out and I wasn't. So for me, I took that and I planted that in Cade's head. Eighth grade is when we started getting in the gym every day. At the time, Cade didn't understand why are we in the gym so long? Why are we working on this? Why are we going so hard? Because he was a kid. Having that, like your cousin is your trainer, is definitely different, but that was one place that we, we really bonded because we both loved to work, so on and off the court. That's somebody I can always go to about things and, and be comfortable with. He'll turn into a pro and a dog, like real talk. Train with him, uh, work hard, and he'll stick with you. He'll make you a pro, real talk. If you're from Arlington, you ain't never played on this court. You're not from Arlington. Kay didn't necessarily just grew up here. But it was times where he came and just played, you know, just to, you know, get some fouls and just become more of a dog. Playground basketball is, is everything. Like, that's real creativity. That's like the mo most pure fashion of basketball. Basketball is really an art, and I feel like if you can't be creative with it and come up with your own stuff, then you're never going to really have your own, you know, signature style to play for real. Coming out here and practicing my own game, things like that, you know, it helped me. Ashton and I, there's nothing we love more than, than helping Kate get better. That's kind of, that's kind of, our singular focus right now. I thought Kay joining the Texas Titans was enormous for his career. I can't imagine there are better AAU programs than them. Going to the Titans was the first time he really was challenged by his peers. I played with them since fourth grade, so having a team that, you know, I had built loyalty with, I had, you know, real brothers with, things like that. I mean, that, that really taught me teamwork better than anything else. High school, you're going to coach what you have, and it's much more developmental. The AAU, it's more like an NBA type, type team where you're going to bring people in for specific needs. The Texas Titans, they really allowed him to transfer from just being a front court player to being a rebounder. They got to push and transition to then being a perimeter player. He was a, a jack of all trades, and that's kind of what you're seeing now with Cade is he's developed into an overall basketball player. 16 youth summer, I had a conversation with him and and really we just talked about what his strengths and weaknesses were. Kay was, I want to say, number two in the nation at the small four position. Cannon came up with a brilliant idea. I want him to play the point. So I was like, okay, yeah, of course. We want him to play the point. But Cannon said, no, I want him full-time point. I want him bringing it down all the time. So I was like, whoa. The doctor said he probably wouldn't be as tall as me, and so we kind of were looking for a physical advantage. I thought he needed to move down to a smaller position. My initial thoughts when Cannon said it, I was open for it because I played quarterback and point guard was always like the guy that's running the show. I wouldn't be the guy running the show, why not? As far as the point guard position, why he is so good at what he does is because he's a great communicator. He's not afraid to fail. He's not afraid to take a chance. He's not afraid to let somebody else have the spotlight. Cade is truly the general on the floor. Even from a young age, when he was playing in the post, he's always been a great passer. And as his handle continued to improve, I, I felt more and more comfortable that he could be maybe a Magic Johnson type. So we made the transition, and it was ugly at first. I had a learning curve for sure. I was struggling a little bit just with, you know, grasping the fact that, like, this is what is probably going to be best for my career, but. It's not what's most comfortable right now. It was frustrating for them. Um, they'll argue every day, practices, games, go home together arguing. My big brother, like, he's a real opinion that I've always valued and, and you know, what he says, like, I take to heart. So 
having that, like having him say, yeah, I think you should move to point guard. I think that was one of the OKs that I needed to, to make it happen and start pursuing it. It wasn't easy. I was the only one that felt like it was the best move until Cade bought into it. The local basketball heads and AAU guys and evaluators and stuff thought I was crazy, thought I was being selfish. Um, but here we are. While they're sleeping, I'm working. It's all part of the journey. This has always been the plan. Settling was never an option. Expand your game. <laughs> Get out there on the wing. <laughs> it ain't my fault. We all got assignments. You know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> so you get assigned to what people <laughs> believe in you to do. Being guards was supposed to be full-time jobs for us. But we had to add on to part-time bigs as well because, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got the ball in our hands and we got to go do all this other stuff too. Poor thing. <laughs> Big fella calling out screams. I used to be with y'all, bro, until I had to do it all, you feel me? <laughs> and then y'all didn't, y'all went with me after that, bro. I made a transition, y'all stopped messing with me, bro. Who was y'all? The bigs. The bigs mess with me, but you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't claim no more. So I'm like, it's what up? You don't claim us. I've been claiming the bigs, bro. No, you haven't. You talking the noise right now, how you not a big? Because you a big, you talking noise. <laughs> so now, you know what I'm saying? That's what it is. You don't want to see me down there. On the block. Yeah. But I would never be uncomfortable. <clears throat> it wouldn't be no coach that You'd would. You'd lose. That's uncomfortable. But I'm saying, though, it would never be a game where, like, you would get a catch on the block no, and, no. Some, and anybody would ever be like, send help with me. Dude. Are you serious? Yeah, nah, I, wouldn't, I don't think so. I don't think so. You need help right or now. There, there's no. Send help right now. I've never just been a mismatch, bro. There's never been a time where I've been, like, outmatched like that, bro. Okay, I'll embarrass you on the block. I'm saying, you. it's cool if you score a couple times, you know what I'm saying? Embarrass. But, bro, I feel much more comfortable with me having to go guard you and then coming down and getting the screen and me, you know what I'm saying? For a game, bro. Yeah. I'm much more comfortable with that. Yeah. So I'm not getting I mean, that's why you're in the position. <laughs> so that's not embarrassing to me. I'm a big fan, bro, but this conversation started as you're losing weight, I'm gaining weight. All right. And you already couldn't see me down there. And it's just, we're just separating. Right. You think? <clears throat> Absolutely. You don't... No reps. You know I get it right off the couch. When he came up here as a freshman, he was varsity ready, and he proved it. Once he got to Bowie, that's when it started getting real, and I was like, okay, got something now. I went to school in North Arlington. He went to Bowie in South Arlington. I would talk trash to my whole boys basketball team for a whole week before the game and just be like, he's finna give y'all buckets. Like, this man is league bound. Y'all don't even understand. He's different level. Between his freshman year and his sophomore year, you know, he was probably one of the strongest players that we've had. I've, I've never had a kid that, that developed so much muscle tone and developed so much strength within one year. Coach Gratz was the first coach to really change my body in the weight room. I was probably like 165 when I got in there. But he, you know, he finally started allowing me to see changes in my body and start feeling athletic and things like that. Seeing that change in your body, it only adds a different wiggle to your game, a different kind of swag to your walk when you're getting on the court. Student session right here, man. It was lit. They was yelling out Cade. You know, you had camera guys and on the sideline, things like that. The atmosphere was crazy. Cade feeds off of the crowd. Cade, Cade loves that. Those were special nights. You left kind of feeling like you were really experiencing something really, really cool. It was a place that you need to get to. It was packed. It was almost like it was going to be sold out. Like you had to get here early. It was a great place to be at. 
on a Friday night especially. During his time when he was here, those two years, the atmosphere was, was unbelievable. His name is going to last forever here at Blue High School. All the best guys are in, you know, these prep leagues and, and prep schools. So it was important for me. I wanted to take that next step for my game. I wanted to challenge myself. And so we, we started doing the talking. We started, you know, exploring around a little bit. Once he started getting interest from, you know, Oak Hill, Prolific Prep, schools like that, then it became more of a reality. We started getting these calls. And then when I told my wife, I said, well, we better start looking into this. This kid is telling us he want to play on national schedule against the best around. And he meant it. I was fully locked in. I wanted to do it. Fully, like I, I was begging them every day. Um, my mom did not want to see me go at all. My pops was back and forth. He wanted to see me go, then he agreed with my mom. I mean, the decision took so long. He knew that he had to become ranked national. He had to play against the best. It was all about playing against the best and things like that, getting his name out there. I remember my sophomore year, I was watching the Geico National Championship, and it was Montverde and R.J. Barrett. And the whole time, the announcers keep talking about you know, how great of a, a program Montverde is. And so I just figured next year, at some point, I need to be playing either against Montverde or with Montverde, you know what I mean? My mom, her wall went up immediately. It wasn't a conversation she wanted to have, but you know, as he started playing better and better, it became pretty apparent that we got to get him out of the aquarium. It was lit. I was like, whoa. There's a lot of kids that's out here that don't get the same hype. Oh, everything kind of did. Kay was there for everything. Kay soaked a lot of that up. I'm training his older brother. At the same time, looking to the sideline like, whoa, hey, he picking that up a little quick. This kid is a little different. And I can really rock out now, I got a feel for it. Here comes Cunningham. It became pretty apparent that we got to get him out of the aquarium. Kate had expressed the desire to go away and play on a national schedule, play against the best of the best. I, at first, wasn't really um, sold on the fact that that needed to happen. He was 16 years old. I felt like I wasn't done teaching him the things that I wanted to teach him. So I was last on board to that. He's the baby of our family, so to miss out on those last two years of high school was a, was a huge decision for us. It, it was tough. You know, I, this is what I need to do. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. But at the same time, I'm the baby of the family. I knew it was going to be hectic for me to try to change her mind. Very tough decision. The reason why it was tough because we stay right across the street from this high school where me and my wife would walk across the street to games. My parents just kind of had to evaluate Kay's current situation. He kind of had outgrown Arlington ISD basketball. It came down to, you know, do we want him to continue to grow and, and chase his dream at the highest level or do we need to watch him play every high school game for the rest of his career. I've been the coach for over 10 years. 
We've been able to win six of the last nine high school national championships. We have, you know, probably the best communicator in high school basketball in Ray Miller. I had spoken with Cannon. You know, he told me that what he was hoping to, you know, find somewhere for Kate to attend the next two years of his high school career and just develop as a point guard. He wanted to grow his game, you know, so he thought he needed to be in a competitive environment playing against the best. Just looking at the history, the guys that came out of Montverde, you got D'Angelo Russell, Joel Embiid, you got Ben Simmons. Went up there and visited. It was a no-brainer. Best coach, talent. The last 10 years here, we've had the great fortune of having really talented players and been able to win six of the last nine high school national championships. We were recognized as the high school team of the decade. Most kids are trying to get to the league. And when they look at the success that Coach Boyle has had of helping people get to the league, they want to be a part of that culture and they seek us out. And when you have an opportunity to work with the best to ever do it, that's really hard to turn down. Just how tough it was on the fam and, and how nervous everybody was going in was, was crazy. It felt like it took months to, for us to finally come to a conclusion. I remember telling Coach Boyle that this kid is one of the best leaders that I've seen on a basketball court at a very young age, and he was still learning how to play the position that he was playing at the time. This kid is telling us he wants to play on a national schedule. Just the best around. Keith was 100% on board with that. And, you know, I think he wanted myself and Coach Ray Miller to really reach out to Mom, Kerry, and, and convince her to let her baby go. <laughs> I had two pages of questions. You could see that the pages had been flipped over and over where she'd been writing all of these uh, different questions and concerns that she may have had. She needs to know everything. She went in there, she's asking all these questions and anything they say, even if it was, you know, class starts at 7.35, she's jotting it down. Like, that has not, that does, that should not matter to my mom because she's going to be all the way in Texas. Um, we were convinced it was the right move. See, so. She definitely made us better coaches and better communicators with, with uh, future parents because she covered just about every question a mom could cover. Felt like the right fit. Felt like the right fit for Cade, but it, it also felt like the right fit for me. And um, I felt at that point that he needed to fly. It's not about going number one. That's out of my control. We focus on putting in the work every day. Because success is no accident. When Kate got here, we were coming off a national championship with R.J. Barrett. We were just coming off being 35-0, and 0, played the best schedule in the country, and he's coming into that, and the expectations were high again. Montverde is not an easy school to go to. It's not one of the schools where you, you hear, oh, they get all the top guys, but they don't go to class. They're going to make sure that you're doing what it takes to get into a college somewhere. On the second month of school, and we're into so many practices, and, and you know, you're tired, your legs are hurting, whatever. You still have to go to class, and Coach Boyle is not slowing down for anybody. We're going to coach you very hard. We're going to pay attention to fundamentals and details, and we're going to be very transparent and honest with you about your strengths and also areas of the development you need. More than anything, I think it gave me like a, a true love for the game. Coach Boyle's a beast. I think one of his greatest strengths is his commitment to fundamentals, to have all Americans riddled through your team, and he really values discipline and repetition. And at the end of the day, put enough good players in, in one room on one team. They just force each other to grow. Now, Verde's not going to play no anybody. They're going to play top 25 teams. You got to bring it. He came on it to bring it.
It really taught me my love of the game, and more than that, it taught me how to compete consistently. Cannon had spoken to me about it, and he liked the fact that we let Ben Simmons play point as a senior year in high school. And Cannon was hoping that, you know, Cade would be a point guard. And right away, it was something that I already had in my mind that I wanted him to be the point guard. First week, we're playing open zone. When I'm getting it on the outlet, I'm, I'm holding on to it. He believed in me, he trusted me with the ball, and he let me rock out. It was an emotional time, but never one time during that entire process did we feel like we made the wrong decision. His ability to influence others was one of the reasons why we were such a dominant team. We were really talented, but his leadership was the key. Ashton and I have been around pros, obviously, being in the game, but never developed one. And Coach Boyle's done it so many times that it was a huge burden off our shoulders that he could get that experience from someone who's done it. Coach Boyle's got it down. He's got it down. They've done everything a high school team wants to do. We were beating teams that were third and fourth in the country by 30 and 40 points. It's not really even a hard argument when you look at the schedule and where players are. I've done this for 30 years. It may sound brash saying this, but it's just the truth. That was the best high school team. And it'd be hard for anybody logically to have an argument against them. When you talk about Cade Cunningham in particular, how did he grow? He's got great size. His handle was good. It had to improve, which it has. His shot was good. It had to get a little better, which it has. Developing his decision-making with a ball screen and say, hey, I have eight or nine options using a ball screen. You know, let's break them down individually. Let's go over them in drills. Let's put them into three-man patterns, four-man games, five-man games. It was so much fun playing with them guys. We had so much talent, but everybody wanted to see each other succeed. Everybody wanted to make the extra pass. It was kind of like that was the mentality around it. it was like, let the next guy have his moment to shine. Surrounded by that much basketball knowledge and that many, you know, big time players, you have no choice but to get better. I'm playing against all these top guys all the time, and I want to make it clear that, you know, I feel like I'm the top guy. So if you're going to do that, you have to bring it every day. He's almost the CEO on the court. He understands dealing with people. One guy, I might grab him by the shirt and get into him a little bit and tell him to pick it up and bring his intensity. Another guy, he understands he might have to give him, you know, a compliment cookie and tell him that, you know, hey, Scotty, you're, you're the best rebounder in the gym, but we need you to step up now and get in the glass and turn the energy up. If you're a guy that can handle the ball like he can at that size to see over people, to take smaller guards to a spot and be able to shoot over them, yet to be able to defensively guard in that spot, we're able to help him grow from one of the best 15 or 20 guys to clear cut the number one pick in the draft, it seems. I believe he is, without a doubt, the best high school coach in the country. Him and Coach Ray have this infrastructure in place that I think they got it, they got it figured out. While they're sleeping, I'm working. It's all part of the journey. This has always been the plan. Settling was never an option. Pull a little further with that left arm, and then slowly roll yourself up onto all four. When Kay came back, he knew he was better than everybody. That's whenever I told myself in my head that I was the best player. I didn't think there was anybody else that was better than me. Came back as a, with a pro mindset. And that's when he used to wake me up. Let's get in the gym. Let's go to the field. Let's get a pool workout going on. Let's do yoga. Press yourself up to your plank. I was like, whoa, 
Okay, that was a that was a big time move. Cannon was already with Oklahoma State, and he came out for a recruiting trip. My college decision might have been coming up. It was tough on me because my brother was at Oklahoma State, and that did not make me say I'm going to Oklahoma State. Two more deep breaths here. In my head, I was fully open. And it was actually kind of tough on me because it was like, you know, how do I say no to this school and my brother is there? <laughs> Breathe. And I remember Cannon coming down here and just taking Kate off campus for dinner, not for recruiting, just to be his brother. We went for a brother to brother and we just talked about, you know, life. We talked about the moon and the stars. All type of stuff. One more deep breath. It really just, you know, allowed me to chill out and, and regroup myself. He was like, you can make whatever decision you want, and I'm going to be fine regardless. Just really being able to talk through that and feel good about the fact that I could make whatever decision I wanted and my family was behind me, you know, it was good for me. And after that visit, Cade came back to campus and he said to me, you know what? That's what I needed. I just needed my brother back. Cannon's relationship, Ashton's relationship, their influence, their love for him goes beyond the game of basketball. It is genuine and it's real. And they are honest with him and they're upfront with him. And Kate really respects that. Cannon's there, and they're tight. That's a brother bond. There's incredible love there, and there was no question in my mind. There was never any place he was going. Even the Cato said, there's no, no other place you're going. My brother to Oklahoma State was a little bit different, just because you're in college now, you have a lot more freedom than I did in, in Montverde. Montverde is a very controlled environment, which high school it should be. Now I'm at Oklahoma State, and you know it's a lot more open. You can kind of move around how you want. The decision to go to Oklahoma State with Cannon being there, he knew that he had kind of an extra layer of support and kind of a, a mentor already with his big brother. With Cannon being there, are you coming in from high school with the hype? And people are going to tell you what you want to hear and things like that. But so having Cannon over there was a blessing. Kind of have different angles on our conversations with our parents. Obviously, they want to know he's the baby. How is he doing in his experience here? As far as being competitive, it's kind of just a tool we use for growth, I think. It was super helpful for me just because I was able to remember seeing him in college. I had a great perspective on what it looked like from, you know, outside looking in, him being able to, to share all the, the stories from college experience, like SMU. You know, he had a Hall of Fame coach as a coach, and he played on the top 25 team. He played in March Madness. I mean, he done everything you could do as a college player. So to have that as your big brother and then to have that as an as assistant coach, in one, I mean. Oklahoma State was honestly the same experience that we've been going through his whole life. Bigger stage, obviously, better competition, but I was his coach on paper, but I still have just been his big brother this whole time. By the time we got here, it was already, you know, a really close-knit relationship. Being here, having all that time together, that was the first time we really got to just, you know, lock ourselves in the gym and get to work and be, you know, down the street from each other, so. You know, it only grew since we've been here. It was definitely important to have family around just because, you know, I wanted to be comfortable. And, you know, I wanted to put myself in, in spots where I was working on things where I wasn't good at. And I felt like being around people that I've been doing that with for a long time was the best thing for me. Four-hour drive to Oklahoma State, I felt like that was a, a great distance from the crib. The stars aligned for it. One specific thing that I knew he needed to get better at was closing out games. I remember some specific instances in high school where late in the game, it's close, and he turns it over or he takes a bad shot. That was something very specific that I felt like he needed to take a step on. We knew that going into the Big 12, going into OSU, we knew that games were going to be close. We knew that going in, I have to be at my best during those crunch time moments. I have to be you know, able to, to fully lock in and, and make plays during those moments. And for a long time, he had always told me, like, you could play great throughout a whole game, but, but at the end of the game, you know, it's a couple mistakes, da-da-da-da. And so that was, he was constantly drilling that, 
you know, going into Oklahoma State, that constant, you know, message kept replaying in my head, and I think I was able to just get tunnel vision, and I wouldn't hear anything in those moments. And, you know, I was just fully locked in, and so it, it helped me. Here comes Cunningham. He'll pull up. He hits a triple. Back outside, Cunningham for the lead. To watch him time and time again close out games for us was impressive for me. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Are you serious? Oh, come on, man. I'm not gonna lie, the Arkansas game is probably my favorite game that I played. We're playing Moses Moody, my roommate for two years in Montverde. This is the only time I'm gonna get to see Moses in college basketball, so I knew that going in and I knew it was gonna be serious. Like, me and Moses talk enough that whoever wins the game is holding that over to the other person for life. That's my God. We, you know, slept less than three feet apart in this little bitty dorm room that we used to be in at Montverde my junior year. And everything that we got out of Montverde, with him for two years, like that's, you know, that's my brother. We both walked right by each other before the game, didn't say anything. Like, this is one of my best friends. We walked right by each other. I don't even know if we looked at each other. You know, we just, just because that's how we both are. We're both super competitive, and that's what I appreciate about Mo. Mo came into the game, and I know how much Mo wanted to win that game. So this was like a lifetime type game for me. It was crazy to see how the, you know, game unfolded and then to see me, you know, be able to make that shot at the end. 12 seconds, Davis guards it. He gets a screen to his left from Caleb Boone. Nine to shoot, 24 seconds. Cunningham, left side jumper, good! Foul line jumper gives Oklahoma State the lead, 79-77. It was good to see the development of the team, and you know, uh, I would have loved to see that team come back for another year, but you know, things are different now, and you know, Cade's on to a new venture. We knew Cade was gonna declare after his freshman year when he was 16 years old. This whole process has been extremely intentional, like none of it really has surprised us, honestly. It's been cool to watch it unfold and, and become reality, but Cade didn't stumble into this. He knew exactly what he wanted, and now here we are checking off the next step. When Kay was 16, I knew he was going to be the number one pick in the NBA draft. It's kind of hard to explain, but... Kay didn't stumble into this. It was tough. He needed to fly. You got to bring it. And Kay wanted to bring it. We were beating teams that were third and fourth in the country by 30 and 40 points. It may sound brash saying this, but it's just the truth. That was the best high school team. I wouldn't hear anything in those moments. I was able to just get tunnel vision. I was just fully locked in. Now here we are checking off the next step. We knew Cade was gonna declare after his freshman year. To be the number one pick, you can't be unprepared. You can't be not ready. From that point forward, everybody's gonna be, you know, ready for you and, and waiting on your name to be on their schedule. This is how it is. So I have to know that going in. I have to know that, you know, everybody wants their best game to be against me. Everybody wants to embarrass me, in all honesty. So, you know, I take that as a compliment, kind of, because I'm gonna get people's best shot. And so for me, I want to be able to give them my best shot and Ken and Nashton have, you know, helped me prepare for that. Ah. I always wanted everybody to, you know, to be honest with me about things and things like that just because, you know, I've seen people in the past, that's how they fallen, you know, just, you know, having the wrong people in their circle. Having people that, you know, 
will tell them everything they want to hear, and that'll, you know, that'll be what sinks that ship. What up? With my family, I never, you know, really had that growing up. So now that, you know, I'm starting to get the things that I'm getting, I didn't want any of that to change. I didn't want, you know, people to start feeling like they had to start telling me yes more often, you know, to, to stay on my good side or anything like that. I think we're tight-knit enough that we can keep this thing rolling and help him continue to develop deep into his NBA career. He trusts us and he buys in and the results have spoken for themselves. The trust is important for Cade just because he's seen and heard so many stories about guys getting screwed over, people infiltrating your inner circle and, and kind of tearing things apart. I think there's enough evidence out there that he understands if you have something good, you got to protect it. Ah. Our grandparents, our aunts and uncles and cousins, and obviously our immediate family are really tight-knit, and we've always preached that we're all we got. That's it, man. Eight weeks. Eight strong, long weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Woo wee. Proud of you, dog. Good work. For real, bro. They have gone through the process that Kate is going through. They understand what it takes, okay? And they realize that being a yes man to Kate or just allowing him to make every decision the way that he may think they should be made may not be the best thing for him. We've talked about it, Keith and I, that our child is out in California, Florida, training, doing all of that, and we're not having to worry. We know that he's got great people in his corner that are with him every day. It's not about going number one. That's out of my control. We focus on putting in the work every day. Because success is no accident. So welcome. Yeah. You, uh, we're excited to have you here. We service uh, over 300 professional athletes, over 200 just in the NBA. We did the championship rings for the Lakers the last three times, Warriors the last three. So you're in good hands. Yeah, it's the Lakers championship ring right there. Golly. That's incredible. Isn't that crazy? That's incredible. Yeah, let me show you how that comes off. So this is the ring and then it actually, the top comes off and it has that's all the retired up. jerseys. That's wild. Isn't that crazy? And we're doing uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're doing their Super Bowl rings right now. Oof, that's going to be tough. Yeah. You have to trust people you're around. Um, and I'm around them every day. You know, I got to be able to, to know that you're going to be honest with me because that's what's best for me. Like, you know, sometimes I'll ask for something because, you know, deep down I want it, but I know I'm not supposed to get it. By all means, like you could take a chain if you want to rock a chain. At least you have something. Cause I don't want you leaving naked with no no jewelry. No, for sure. We need to make yeah, sure you, you see, have I'm something. I'm trying to walk out with something. Yeah, man. no, we're not letting you leave here with I'm nothing. To you gotta have something. You know, hey, should I go get this chain? Da, da da da. That's worth too much for me to be trying to go get, right? You know, I'm getting ready to touch some money, but sometimes I, I've tried them and just asked them things like that, but they they'll never fold. You wanna try this one on? Yeah, yeah. You wanna just put it on top of that one? Good. I don't know if you ready for that, though, bro. I don't know if you ready for that. You don't think so? Don't Come on, that. now. <laughs> oh, don't play me like that, man. Come on, fam. I tell Kay the real. I tell him what he doesn't want to hear. I make him uncomfortable. Cannon makes him uncomfortable. As far as in the long run, he can play for anybody. He can play for any coach. I'm telling you, we, we give him the real, and it's not pretty. <laughs> yeah, I got some heat, man. They'll always tell me, you know, exactly what they think. We 
we trust each other. We're family. They never give themselves a second to stop and say, oh, this is K. He's, you know, gonna be number one pick. Let me, let me tell him yes, because that's gonna make him happy. They instantly tell me, you know, the first thing that comes to their mind because, you know, they want what's best for me. So that's what you want around you. I don't want people that are, you know, trying to protect my feelings all the time. That's what you want. And that's what I got. Back to Dallas. <laughs> That's gonna get us fair, right? That's gonna burn all on the neck. Dallas gonna be worse than Miami, I think. Oh, yeah, Dallas yeah, gonna be out of here. They said it's hot. It's <laughs> <Chris Green. laughs> They love each other. I mean, they're, they're, they're family, but they respect each other. They respect each other's opinions about things. They are honest with each other. I think that that's what makes it work so well. You gonna walk out that, that door in the morning. <laughs> Your neck will be burning, dog. Remember, we said it's gentle. Gentle, <laughs> son, yeah, this right? This is gentle, son. Bro, we're gonna get dark quick, bro. I'm all for it. I'm coming back with my ass. Yeah, man, yeah, Miami's gonna get on your head <laughs> for the show. They speak the same language, and their best interest is 100 for him. And to me, that's the huge thing about it. Cannon and Ashton's IQ is one of the reasons why they say Kate has a high IQ. You see it so many times. You see guys that are around people that allow them to drive their car into the lake. You know, they allow them to get off the right path. Once they get off that right path, they're so used to telling them yes and yes, like trying to protect their feelings that eventually you're too far off, you know, and then things go downhill. So to have guys that are, are constantly trying to make sure that I'm on the right path, make sure that I'm mentally healthy, make sure that, you know, things are going right. I mean, I'm grateful for them dudes. It's special to be able to do this in, you know, situations like this, like the pre-draft, things like that, because, you know, a lot of times, like, you know, going into this, people don't get to work with their family. People don't get to, you know, actually put the grind in with, with people that, you know, are blood to them. So, uh, I mean, we definitely are grateful for this. We know that, you know, what we have is special and we try to make the most of each day. Just checked in. This is straight love view. I ain't gonna lie. You know there was love out there. New York showed a lot of love. A lot of NBA fans around. It's cool. Like I, I've always dreamed of being in the NBA draft. I've always dreamed of going out to New York and, and getting my name called. So to be able to experience all the things that come around it to you know, walk the street and, and have little kids looking up to you and things like that, like. I mean, I remember whenever I was looking up to players and things, so stepping out there and having all these people like, hey, you know, it's, it's cool. It's fun. It's fun to see. I ain't got to speak when I enter the winners heard of me. Feeling like the summer beach side in the winter with my lord throw it east side. Do they usually have your shoe size? Yeah, I don't, some places don't. I don't really go bowling too much, but some places don't, so. It was so much fun playing with them guys. I mean, it really just, you know, allowed me to, to kind of chill out and, and regroup myself and, you know, be ready for the next day. It was super helpful for me just because I was able to remember, you know, my family was behind me. You know, it was good for me. Two days, yeah. one of your dreams comes true. Then a whole new journey starts. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. <laughs>
it's wild that we're really here now. Right? <laughs> In New oh, York. It's such a long process, but it was so quick. So I the Seth Curry drill. He has to go all the way around and all the way back. And he has a minute and a half. Only one player this summer has done it, too. Game time. Yeah. Good job. Brian didn't do that one. Way to shoot it. That was tough. Appreciate that. What's your what's your mood song right now? Golly, bro, that's a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you right I now. I got a bro. few different moves on right now, bro. Like, I got a bunch of different moves. Bro. Yeah, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah. Look how you start the video. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, I've been trying to wrap my head around it for a while now, so, I mean, it's. It's been a long time coming, a little bit, but I mean, just being in this situation is surreal. I dreamed of it, you know, and once you once you're actually seeing it in real life, you know, it's a it's kind of, it gives you kind of a tingly feeling just because you want to pinch yourself and you know, make sure that you're really there. But I mean, like I said, it's been kind of a long time coming now, so you know, I just try to stay level headed and keep working and you know, reaching the next dream. While they're sleeping, I'm working. It's all part of the journey. This has always been the plan. Settling was never an option. Tough. Got my Ricky card going. I go get this, man. Yeah, I go get it. Coming out soon. We gotta be down there ready at 3:30. They got us getting there. Or they got us leaving at 3:30 for an 8 o'clock drive. Yeah, man. I think you're gonna have that. Dude's like, feet gonna be hurting in them yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was talking about the tie. What tie? Uh, they didn't do a tie. But I was saying, I think we, I think we need to get a black tie. Oh, oh my god! I think it's your shirt. No, nah, I said tie. Oh, no, you don't want to see the shirt. You'll cover up this. Like, they're real life telling you, like, this is where you're living in three, two, one. And then you just have to, you know, try to take that all in. What's going on, y'all? Y'all hear me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm good, man. How y'all doing? Who's your dream celebrity to see courtside when you suit up for a game? Like, Barack Obama would be tough having a president at your game. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. It gives you a different clarity on, you know, where you're gonna be at moving forward. I mean, it's it's real life like a game, so that you're a contestant in, it's crazy. When Kay was 16, I knew he was going to be the number one pick in the NBA draft, which probably sounds ridiculous, and it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but I know what kind of person he is. I knew what I was going to pour into him. I knew what the rest of my family was going to pour into him. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a lot of emotions going around. I'm going to try my best not to cry. And when I say cry, I'm talking about boo-hoo crying more than anybody in the family. Come on, man. I'm crying right now. When do you think I'm going to be that moment come? Mm. You guys better have some kind of life jackets on. I'm gonna fill the room up with tears. We're, we're gonna be so proud and so excited. When Adam Silver calls Kay's name, I got a feeling I'm gonna start crying. I'm, I'm a bit of a crybaby sometimes. It's just really awesome to see my little brother reach his dreams. To watch your, your, your child realize their dream, there's just nothing better. It's gonna feel like a dream, but 
He deserves every bit of it. With the first pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Detroit Pistons select Cade Cunningham. I, I couldn't hear nothing after that. I mean, it's, you're thinking about so much, but at the same time, you're thinking about nothing because there's so many thoughts running around that you can't hold on to one for so long. It's just full-ride scholarship getting to one of the top schools, being one of the top guys, and NBA draft always being over all of those and, and being like, that's where we need to get. Once you know you hear your name call, it's like, yeah, we did that. Big hug from his mom, Carrie. The love from his dad, Keith. You see the reaction in Stillwater. He becomes the highest drafted player in school history. It was crazy, I'm not even gonna lie. A moment I'll never forget. I gotta buff up, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you're ready. I'm buffed up now. Which camera I'm looking at? I'm in this one? Yeah, you're in this one right here. Detroit, I'm all the way in. Detroit Pistons, I'm all the way in. Let's do it. Ashton was on the side. I wanted him to be at the table with us, but I still got to, you know, spend that moment with him. That was a dream. And so to hear that and, and see that was great for us. We did it, love you, I don't even, man, I, I, man, I don't even remember. There was so much stuff going on, man. I don't know where my head was at. First, I just want to say, you know, more than thrilled to be here, uh, to, you know, finally see some faces around Detroit. And once I, you know, heard Detroit winning the lottery, I mean, my mind was on Detroit. I wanted to be in Detroit. And so I was stuck on that. What's it been like being embraced by the city? I mean, we saw the mural. Oh, you saw it? Yeah, the mural is crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I got a mural out in Detroit. That's crazy to me, so. These people deserve to have a winning team in their city, so. To be able to have that much love out here, for them to embrace me like that, I mean, it only wants me to, you know, play harder for them. Like, it gives me more motivation. It's love both ways, and I'm happy to be a part of Detroit. Shout out to all my people at Mount Verde. Shout out my people at Bowie. Shout out South Arlington. Shout out 817. Shout out 313. Shout out Texas. Shout out the US. You hear me? Oh, man, you got to let me walk off on camera, too. Yeah, that was, that's a post-credit scene. Man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh.